the session of last uh, Facebook session, right? Like the meta session, that that helped me understood it because a lot of things like how I run like from the sales side of things or running a category, etc. Right? Where you know that hey, you have to do this, right? Like hey, you have to implement this much campaigns, spend this much, etc. But then like what goes inside that, I wasn't very well aware of. But this one was like very very helpful for me at least personally. That's great to know, Jagan. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, thanks, Ancho. Over to you. Uh, I just wanted a few hands to be raised, just so to ensure that we are back from the break. Awesome, cool. I think we are good to go. Thank you, thank you so much. Perfect. That's that's really great. Uh, so this one will be slightly smaller than last one because uh, uh, most brands typically spend less on Google, so Google session gets less time than Meta. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but uh, frankly, um, I'm actually a big fan of how Google has uh, developed e-commerce features in the last two to three years. Because when we started in 2015, then anybody whom I used to ask, they used to spend 90% of their budget on Facebook, Instagram. Many, many brands we came across who were not spending on Google at all. And who would do 100% of their budget on Facebook, Instagram. What I've seen in the last two to three years is two big shifts. Number one, in general, Meta or Facebook, Instagram have got more expensive. So people are now moving a little more towards Google. But second is also that Google has put in a lot of effort in building their e-commerce features. So they launched standard shopping in 2018-19. They launched smart shopping in 1920. They launched performance max in 22. They launched YouTube for action somewhere around that long time. They launched discovery ads in the last two to three years. So Google has actually sort of like buckled up and launched a lot of stuff in the last three to four years. I do feel um, Google itself can help a DTC brand scale very, very rapidly. And most brands today uh, underspend on Google and they are not able to exploit the full advantage of Google as a platform. So hopefully today I'll try to, I have a slightly smaller presentation today on Google, but I'll try to cover some of these aspects uh, so that as a DTC founder or marketer, uh, we can understand the whole scope of Google. Uh, again, some takeaways. Uh, one is, of course, uh, some success story. Second is um, talking about what are the different features of Google which are relevant for a DTC brand. Uh, I'll talk about a few things about how to set up the right performance max campaign or how to set up the right search campaign or DSA campaign. Uh, or even YouTube for that matter. And towards the end, we'll talk about a recommended structure for scaling with Google, very similar to what we spoke about with Facebook. Now, just because this is Friday evening, I thought I'll add this slide. Um, this is how I think being a DTC founder feels like today. I'll give you a little background about what deep animation you are seeing on the screen. This is a roller coaster ride called Kindaka, and you can search it on Google also. Uh, it's one of the flagship rides in Six Flags in New York. Uh, I had taken this ride in 2008. Uh, that was the first and the last ride I had taken uh, because it's so scary that nobody can jump on it on the second time. Um, a little bit more about this ride. It takes you 36 floors straight vertically up. Then you take a U-turn, and then you come down face down 36 floors, almost a free fall. So the scariest ride anybody can get on. Today, running a DTC business, I think, feels something like it. A uh, lot of moving things, like I was telling Jagan also. Uh, you have CPMs going up. You have an iOS impact. Uh, some attribution changes happening all the time. Um, there are some positives also. Of course, COVID and Geo were two of them. Uh, but more importantly, even the ecosystem has evolved. So, so just hang on. I think uh, the roller coaster, uh, I think in, at least in terms of DTC, will continue for some more time. A brief, uh, very short case study. Uh, Indus Valley is uh, one of the brands. It's into kitchenware. And uh, they have scaled very rapidly on Google over the last one year. Almost 50% of their sales today come from Google compared to 10% one year ago. 
So this is exactly what I meant when I started in the beginning that a lot of brands today underspend on Google um, and they can benefit significantly just by increasing their share on Google. Now this is what I was trying to allude towards in my last presentation that depending on the category which you are selling, Google can actually take up 40 to 60% of the overall budget, which means that for certain categories, you could be spending more on Google than on Facebook. And what are these categories? These are those categories which are intent categories. So let's say if you are selling uh, fitness equipment, right? Or if you are selling even Ayurveda or health and wellness or gardening tools, right? All these categories are very high intent. I am not going, I may not buy a fitness equipment just because I saw an ad on Facebook and I'm probably not a fitness enthusiast or I don't need that. Right? Same is true with gardening tools as well. So there are these niche categories um, or there are these categories which inherently are more intent than impulse. In all those categories, Google should be spending more than you are spending on Facebook. So you should be spending less than 50% on Facebook, Instagram and greater than 50% on Google. So one of the top optimization implementations or techniques which we share with the clients is just get the Facebook Google split right. And if you ask me my uh, rough guess, 40% of the work is done if you get the split right. Of course, the rest of it is all the best practices which you are talking about. So just decide for yourself which category do you like, apparel, fashion, high impulse, maybe 70, 80% Facebook, 20% Google, other categories, FMCG, CPG, more intent, uh, 40, 50% Google and balance Facebook. So we have just one poll for today, uh, at least in this session. Uh, I'll request Aman to just roll out that poll. Yes. So the poll is where are you currently spending on Google? Search only, shopping only, search and shopping, search, shopping, and YouTube, and not spending on Google. And shopping pretty much includes the performance max also, uh, which is the latest uh, which Google has rolled out. So we'll just wait for a couple of more seconds. Uh, we've got a good number of votes already. So I'll be ending the poll now. Um, good insights. So roughly 50% of the audience, you must be able to see the results. 50% of the audience are spending on search and shopping, which is great. Um, another 25% are spending on search and shopping and YouTube, which is also very interesting. So one takeaway from, for me from this is a lot of you are currently not spending on YouTube, um, which could be a takeaway for you from today's session, because I fundamentally believe that YouTube is actually uh, becoming more and more critical as a platform. In fact, you can verify some of these numbers that YouTube uh, today has a good $30 billion annual ad spend, which is roughly two thir one third of Facebook. So it's not small. It's actually growing very rapidly. And Google has launched a lot of features on YouTube specifically for e-commerce brands. So. So going back, uh, I think I'll start, continue from where we left from. Uh, this, in my opinion, is one of the most uh, important slides for today that I know I've been talking about Google and I've been talking about Meta, but Google is not one platform. Google is actually four platforms. And to think about it, if YouTube was acquired by Meta instead of Google, we would not be talking about YouTube in this presentation, we would have talked about YouTube in the previous presentation. So the, the point which I'm trying to make here is YouTube has nothing in common with Google. It's actually a completely separate platform, just like Facebook and Instagram, YouTube is a different platform. So 
So don't think of Google as just Google, right? It should be thought about as four different categories. One is your shopping or performance max campaigns, uh, which are basically those images which you see when you search on Google. Second is your text-based search campaigns, which is when you search on Google, you see some images like you can, not images, sorry, text, like you can see on the screen. The third is your discovery campaign. Now, a lot of you may not have known about discovery. Uh, discovery are basically when you scroll on YouTube feed, uh, you see these nice carousal images, ads, and news feed ads, just like what you see on Facebook. Those are known as discovery. They can be actually as powerful or even more powerful than Facebook and Google, sorry, Facebook and Instagram. And the last is YouTube ads. Uh, which are self-explanatory. These are those ads which you see on YouTube and they are video ads. So one takeaway for today, in my opinion, is start looking at Google as four platforms and start talking about the strategy for each of them. So I know around 75% of all the audience here are not running Discovery and YouTube. Uh, so I think it's a big opportunity which a lot of you might be missing. Now, we all know that Google has a huge bunch of products under the Google umbrella. Uh, what I've tried to do is I've tried to list some of these products just to show you the wide gamut which is under Google. And these are only part of them. I'm sure if I keep adding more, there'll be another five, 10 of them. But most important thing which I want to highlight is for DTC performance marketing, not all of them need to be run. So you don't have to run maybe remarketing search ads. You don't have to run true view for reach or true view for shopping because the moment you look at the entire uh, set of products available with Google, we always get confused and then you don't know what to run, what not to run. So what I've done today is I've highlighted this small green tick, which effectively says that these are all the products which you need to be running and nothing more than that. So forget about the GDN for now, forget about true view for reach remarketing search ads, they are not needed um, for DTC performance marketing, especially at the current scale. Maybe once we have, let's say, we get to a scale of maybe a couple of crores revenue per month, we may want to run these campaigns. But for brands which are still in mid or early stages, only these five campaigns are important. Um, I'll get into a little bit of depth in each of them. Uh, may not be a lot because I think many of you are already running shopping and search campaigns. But uh, the first one is performance max campaigns. I, I believe a um, lot of you must be running them. This is a relatively new campaign launched by Google. It actually replaced the smart shopping campaign. The key difference between smart shopping and performance max is performance max also shows ads across some of the other inventory like YouTube and Discovery. So think of it as Smart Shopping++. Plus plus. Um, usually these campaigns tend to perform really well. So um, the way to run them is uh, you can link them to, a to the entire catalog of products and Google will automatically pick products from your catalog, identify the right keywords where those products should be kicking, should be coming in and then they automatically show those products on those keywords. So think of this campaign as more like a black box campaign from Google that they get all the inputs from you and they do everything on their own. Uh, more AI ML driven product, but uh, definitely a mandatory campaign to be run for every DTC brand today. In due course of time, Google will be deprecating their smart shopping campaign. So effectively Performance Max will be the only campaign available under the shopping umbrella. Uh, small inputs on Performance Max. So when we're creating the Performance Max campaign, uh, there is a lot of option to add relevant assets. By assets, I mean images, videos, ad text. So a recommended practice is take some time out and add those five images, add those five videos, add those three to five ad text, because uh, these typically help a lot. Um, when Google is showing ads across YouTube and Discovery and other display platforms, these images come very handy. Uh, so even if they are optional, uh, make it a point to add them. Uh, usually we have seen that the performance of campaign goes up when we add these images. Um, 
to get the best performance there are some feed optimization techniques which google recommends i'll probably not get into the depth of them in the interest of time but uh, make sure that your titles are correctly written which means your title includes the name of the product or the category of the product make sure the descriptions which we are sending to google uh, include some of the use cases of the product because titles and descriptions are the most important uh, based on these uh, google is able to identify which keyword to trigger which product on so feed quality or feed optimization is one of the most important things when running a performance max campaign and there is a very nice article from google on um, how to check the feed quality score or what are the best practices of feed which can be referred to um, brand search is something which uh, uh, i'm sure all of you would have come across many of you will be running it but um, sometimes brands tell me that why should we be running a brand search campaign because anyways these are people who are searching for my brand and they might organically come from for my website automatically uh, my answer to them is um, if you don't run brand search campaign uh, there is no assurance that the organic link will be coming at the top uh, there could be competitors which might be bidding on your own brand search and the third most reason which i give them is the amount of spend on brand search is usually very low so if you have a budget of 3 lakh a month we are talking about spending maybe 15,000 a month on brand search campaigns. So it's a very small amount of money, but it ends up giving a huge return on ad spend. You're usually seeing ROS of 10x, 15x coming from the brand search campaign. So uh, there is no harm in running a brand search. You might be just uh, spending like 1-2% of your budget and you may be able to get like 5-10% to of those sales. And the risk of not running is... Uh, you are exposing yourself to the competition. Uh, they may be bidding on your brand keywords and they may, you may be losing some of those audience to them. Dynamic search campaigns at the second one. This is slightly less popular when it comes to DTC brands. Um, not many of you may be running these DSA campaigns, but we would highly recommend that um, a small budget, which is around 10% of your budget, can go into these DSA campaigns. Now, DSA campaigns uh, can be created very easily. Uh, all you have to do is you have to specify the domain name and a couple of um, options. Like you can see on the left side, it says use Google's index of my website, and the rest is taken care by Google. So Google will scroll the website, sorry, crawl the website, pick the relevant links identify the relevant keywords and trigger um, the relevant text ads on those keywords. So think of this as an automating a way to automate the non-brand search ads. But for e-commerce, I would highly recommend this um, than running the non-brand search ads. The only scenario where you can still run the non-brand search ads is when you probably have only one product, two product, three products on the website where we don't really need a dynamic search ad we can manually create these ads so again i uh, would suggest that uh, try out a dsa campaign uh, it generally gets a lot of intent traffic on the website uh, this is youtube uh, i think i definitely want to spend a little more time on youtube given a lot of the audience is not running youtube so like i said in 2020 google launched youtube for action YouTube for action is equivalent to conversion optimized campaigns on Facebook. So earlier, YouTube only had sort of traffic campaign uh, equivalent on Facebook, but later they rolled out the conversion equivalent on, um, uh, on their platform. So YouTube for action is that. So for e-commerce, we only recommend YouTube for action campaigns. Uh, within YouTube for action, our recommendation is usually run product video ads and not necessarily brand video ads. So brand ads are okay. Maybe you can run one or two of them, but as much as possible, run ads of specific products on YouTube and divert people on the product page. So if you are a borosil, maybe run ad for that nice dinner set. Um, if you are a fashion, maybe run ad for your top performing products. I understand that if you have a big catalog of 100, 200, 500 products, how do you create product specific video ads? The answer is you don't have to create video ads for all your products. Identify only the flagship products 
and try to create video ads for them like we like this brand milo we work with they have 100 products on their website but their flagship product is um uh, pregnancy pillow so they are running video ads of only that product so that's how youtube can be used uh, identify the flagship products and run ads for them some of the other best practices which we spoke about in facebook is also applicable to youtube so make sure you put the price of the product the title of the product uh, very clearly set the expectations correctly so if cod is not available mention that cod is not available so in that sense youtube ad is actually more closer to facebook or instagram ad than it is to rest of google products now this i think is a very interesting feature which some of you may not be aware of um, this is called as custom intent targeting uh, if you ask me this was a game changer which google did around a couple of years back what it effectively does is it helps you target people on youtube based on their search history on google.com so if somebody is searching let's say plant protein on google.com one month down the line or 15 days down the line they can see plant protein video ads on youtube so for the longest time google was not using their search intent on youtube surprisingly but for the last couple of years they have rolled out this targeting custom intent targeting works beautifully well i inherently believe that this is even stronger than some of the facebook targeting options because facebook does not have search data and intent data and google has that uh, which is why in the beginning of the deck i also said that i feel youtube could actually um, give a fight for the money to meta so eventually uh, youtube is growing at that pace a good practice for custom intent is just pick up 5 10 15 20 keywords related to your brand or keywords related to your products put them in the custom intent like you can see on the left uh, screenshot um, we have put something called food storage lunch box glass lunch box containers uh, all these are keywords relevant to borosil and this is a screenshot about the custom intent targeting for borosil one of the best targeting options working for them on youtube um, i'll probably not spend a lot of time here but uh, i spoke about this use the best practices of facebook which means uh, shop now as call to action button price in the ad copy headline in the ad copy uh, so whatever we spoke about for facebook is also applicable for youtube and this is uh, discovery ads so like i said in the beginning that when you scroll on youtube these are nice carousel ads and news feed ads uh, which are now visible on youtube feed uh, these ads are very similar to Facebook. They look to some extent similar also. Just like a Facebook carousel has 10 products, they also have 10 products. They have a shop now button. They have a price which is visible in the ad copy. Um, these ads generally perform very well. Um, one of the reasons they perform very well is because the CPCs are much lower on YouTube. So if you're spending 20 rupees to get a person from Facebook, Instagram, you will be surprised to know that you are spending only three to four rupees or five rupees to get a person from these ads. Part of the reason is also that this is still an early feature. It's an early adopter thing. Not many people are leveraging discovery ads. So I feel there is a blue ocean sort of a thing. If you set up discovery now, you will see a lot of traffic coming on the website at lower cost. Um, when, I, when we spoke about Facebook, I mentioned that Traffic campaigns are not recommended on Facebook. Uh, instead, what we recommend is running discovery campaigns on YouTube. The discovery campaigns on YouTube in some way work like your traffic campaigns with one key difference that the quality is very, very good. And the way you can measure quality is depending upon the average session duration on Google Analytics. So when we run discovery, we see that people are coming to the website. They're also spending a lot of time on the website. But when we run traffic campaign on Facebook, we see that people do come to the website, but they may not spend a lot of time. And the best practices are similar, optimized for conversions, custom intent targeting is also applicable for discovery, product specific ads, price in ad copies, land on product page. So again, whatever the best practices are of Facebook carousel ads, the same best practices can be applicable to YouTube.
so that's sort of the agenda for today uh, hopefully i was able to convince all of us to run youtube and discovery along with the shopping and performance max um a very brief slide towards the end on the recommended structure um for performance max we usually recommend only one campaign um we have even google india team when we speak to them they only recommend one campaign uh, so unless there is a very corner case uh, you should be okay with one single campaign of performance max um put couple of asset groups in it um and a few ads within it um uh, brand search campaign again we recommend only one single campaign dsa also we recommend only one single campaign so campaign structure is very simple three campaigns performance max brand search dsa within dsa generally a better targeting is just give the website url and let google crawl everything uh, there is an option to give specific products and categories uh, but not really recommended within youtube and discovery the campaign structure is quite similar to your facebook campaign structure so you can have multiple campaigns on youtube um one for your top category top two categories similarly you can have multiple campaigns in discovery for your top two three categories within each campaign um again similar to facebook have one custom intent targeting and one look alike which is called a similar audience in google and if you need you can also add an in market audience in market audience is less recommended because custom intent is usually seen to perform much better than in market so we would recommend putting custom intent and similar and maybe an in market if needed in ads again it's very similar uh, use responsive ads uh, that's a recent feature which google has launched and you can add a couple of two to three ads maybe one video and one or two other ads Uh, so just like facebook we recommend adding at least 2 to 3 ads in each ad group uh, so that uh, the optimization works uh, quite well so that's it uh, i think uh, that's a slightly shorter version of the presentation um, but uh, hopefully we were able to get some takeaways from this uh, and i'm happy to take some questions what do you jagan thank you thank you so much anshuk i think uh, i i was able to relate to a lot of things as i told yesterday i think we have something in common as uh, some from our past or something you took boros here you took indus valley like kitchen was my first category when i got into the retail space right and it's like i'm very close to that first category that i was introduced into the retail space so i could relate a lot of things right and um, you know it's also a little um, you know, what do you call it? underestimated category as well like a lot of people talk about fashion and other stuff but home kitchen is something like which is really really gaining uh, you know the attraction today because it's a little unstructured in india but i think with the d2c and the e-commerce space coming in it's growing so i was able to relate a lot of it i'll but uh, i'll open for questions now i think there are a couple of hands already go ahead people who wants to go first हेलो हे ऋषभ यस सर आई हैव रनिंग 3 मंथ्स 3 मंथ्स अगो गूगल शॉपिंग एड्स स्मार्ट शॉपिंग एड्स बट आवर आरओए इज ओनली 2x एंड राइट नाउ वी रनिंग परफॉर्मेंस कैंपेन परफॉर्मेंस मैक्स कैंपेंस बट स्टिल इज अ लो आरओए यस सो आई थिंक आई कैन हेल्प यू आंसर दैट सो number one i would say for performance max uh, try to implement the best practice which effectively says that relook at your asset asset groups which you have added um, our recommendation is to add images of your best performing products add at least five to seven tag lines add um, a couple of videos if possible uh, so that you give enough content to google to optimize between them second recommendation would be look at the feed quality feed quality is one of the most important parameters so do we have the right titles in the feed do we have the right description in the feed there could always be some scope to improve the description uh, we usually seen that uh, small improvements in feed can help you get better response in terms of the performance max campaign one last point i would say is generally don't rely purely on attribution of google so if you are seeing a 2x ros on your google ad account uh, number one google has a 30 day attribution window 
which means you will see these two x going up for the next 30 days. And this is a, something which we have extensively tested. You can also do it. So for example, today is let's say 29th of July. Uh, go to your ad account and look at the performance from 1 to 29 July. Make a note of it in one of the books or the diaries and come back again on August 30 and look at the performance of July 1 to July 29. You will see that the performance has gone up because a lot of attribution on Google actually happens much later than um, uh, when you have served the ad. So, uh, so don't just look at the 2x alone, uh, include the late attribution also. And one small open point, which I leave it here, I don't have a definite answer, but in my experience, I've seen time and again that the traffic which comes from shopping campaigns and performance max campaign actually helps uh, Facebook remarketing campaigns a lot. We have seen cases where Google was just showing at 2x, but when we pause them, the Facebook sales also drop and the website sales also drop. So look at the CPC of your performance max campaign. If your performance max campaign is giving you clicks at 5 rupee, 7 rupee, compared to Google, you, Facebook's 20 rupee click. So give some weightage to uh, performance max due to that also. Uh, I think a lot of us asked between day before yesterday, yesterday and today that there are attribution problems. Yes, there are attribution problems of late. And that's why just looking at the 2x and deciding that the performance max is not working uh, may be a suboptimal decision. Sir, same uh, face we, uh, our website sale is down, also Facebook sale is down and ROA is still down in Facebook. That's okay. answer. Got it. So you and should consider. Uh, I'll just answer the what I was saying. So you should consider uh, scaling your performance max campaign and looking at if your performance on the Facebook has gone up or not, or if your or your overall sales have gone up or not. Um, what we recommend brands more and more these days is to track a metric called CRR, which is cost to revenue ratio, which is total marketing spend divided by total revenue. So if your performance max is scaling and your CRR is within the range, then don't worry so much about what ROS Google ad account is reporting, because there could be under reporting of uh, attributions at either the Google end or the Facebook end. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Rishabh. Any any other questions? Yeah, hi. Uh, Ansho Kananya here again. So we are a brand of low glycemic index foods, uh, mostly staples, and now getting into other food categories. So wanted to understand on YouTube, if you are to run video ads, what type of video ads would you recommend? More like a review from like a customer a more educational video or like a recipe video because being cool. Got it. So number one, when you're running YouTube, just identify one or two or three flagship products and just focus on them. Um, as much as possible, if these flagship products are of higher average order value, that will be recommended. So let's say if you have a 500 gram or a one kg product, you might want to promote that on YouTube rather than that 100 gram one. Got and it. Coming to what video to run, um, I would say it's actually a test and learn sort of a situation. Um, yeah. My best practices which I have seen is um, if you have a face in the video, that works really well. If you have a voice in the video, it works really well. Animations don't work well. GIFs also don't work well. Um, product specific videos usually work better than just saying that we are a brand and we sell this uh, because uh, people typically today buy a specific product which was they like the product and not because they just want to buy something from the brand they love. So between UGC and between, um, let's say, uh, recipe, very tough to say which one will work. Okay, and one more question. So regarding the spend split versus Google versus Meta, uh, would you say for a brand like us, we should focus probably 60% on Google and 40% on Meta? Absolutely. 100% there. 60% on Google minimum. Uh, maybe going forward even higher than 60. 
Meta could okay. actually become more of a remarketing channel for you in due course of time. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any next two questions, please? Yeah. So I'll just take it up. Um, so so we are into health and wellness space, uh, into vitamins and supplement space. And when we are running the ads, Meta is performing really well for us uh, with an ROS of almost two to three. But when we try to run ads on Google, it is driving a lot of traffic, but not converting it. So, uh, you know, just three days back only, we paused all the campaigns on uh, Google, which was very counterintuitive to what we just uh, discussed in last uh, 30, 40 minutes. Um, so, so this was one question that, you know, what do we need to do? Second one was about, is there a way because, you know, we don't get to know how do we measure the conversion is coming from Google because it might have the traffic might have come from Google. They may not have converted right there. Maybe through remarketing uh, of meta, they might have converted. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think that's, that's a great question. Uh, so number one, what I would suggest is now that you have paused Google, just observe the overall revenue on the website. Right? Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, you would see a significant dip in the revenue. But if you don't see a significant dip and your website revenue continues as it is, and your Facebook is already giving you a 2x and a 3x, then I would say you are in actually a great position. Uh, because for health and wellness space, a 2x or a 3x on Facebook is actually considered as very, very good. Mm -hmm. Now. Coming back, if you do see a dip on website revenue, mm. then the indication is some of your Google traffic was actually helping you convert on Meta. Mm. So there, I, my recommendation would be that I know in a ideally we would want to see some data where we can see a view where traffic is coming from Google and converting on Meta. Correct. Unfortunately, attribution tools are not that advanced. Mm. Uh, we are also trying to build something similar at Adyogi, but with I would say mediocre success as of now. Um, but one way to, if you really want to experiment, one way to do it is go to Google Analytics. Mm. Google Analytics has a multi-funnel conversion view mm. where it will show you every touch point before a conversion happens. And there you can filter that the first touch point is Google. Okay. Got it. You may be able to see some indication of whether Google is helping the Facebook campaigns. Um, again, it doesn't give a hundred percent uh, convincing answer, unfortunately, uh, but these would be my recommendation. Of course, you may want to relook at your Google campaign setup and make sure that the performance max is running correctly, the feed is correct, the assets are being provided or not. Got it. Thank you, Anshu. Thank you. Okay. Uh, shall I take up the next question? Yes, absolutely, Prashant. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we have seen uh, when uh, you know the conversion per you know day you know increases, it reaches to a level, and then it sudden drops off. Okay, then it takes a while, like say a week or two for us again to reach to that level, and again it drops off, uh, and that has happened at least uh, four to six times in the past. Uh, so, if it doesn't reach to that level, it keeps on like. Uh, you know, uh, you know, performing in the same way, but in case it reaches to a level, it drops off. So, what could be the reason? Is there, you know, competitive traffic? Uh, you know, competition is tracking us, or is there anything else? Because this, I have identified, and I'm very sure on this. And this is for performance max or any specific campaign you're talking about? Campaign type? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is for both, like Facebook and uh, Google. Performance at max is part of Google. You get most of the craft, uh, you know, conversions from Google MP. So you can okay. say yes, it is peculiar to Google also. Okay. See, usually we don't see that. Uh, there could be two, three reasons why that might happen. Uh, number one could be if there are some payment issues. Uh, generally, payment issues have a very detrimental impact on the ad account. So suddenly, if let's say Facebook prepaid account gets stopped, we have seen the performance drop suddenly, or the Google account gets blocked. Uh, we always see the performance drop. And I know that many of you must be facing that challenge after the RBI mandate in September last year, uh, payment of Facebook and Google has become a big challenge. So that's first reason why we see sudden drop in performance. Uh, second is uh, sometimes when you make too many changes to the campaign, let's say, for example, if you have a habit of changing all creatives on Monday, hypothetically, 
we see that because all creatives have changed, everything goes back into learning, and all of a sudden the performance drops. So these are the two reasons we have seen. Otherwise, I don't see why the performance should drop so suddenly and that too on a recurring manner. Okay, it goes to twenty five percent low, uh, or even ten percent low. It's, it comes down to ten percent or to twenty five percent. That's a problem. Okay. Uh, in any other platform, as you know, Meta is not performing well nowadays. Can we explore any other platforms like uh, Snapchat or maybe something else, which which doesn't have a Google or you know RBI issues? <laughs> That's a question <laughs> which I also need to answer because uh, honestly, I'm also facing similar challenges. We as a company, Adobe also faces because we have huge okay. dependency on Facebook, Instagram, and Google. Um, what I can tell is. Um, uh, Snapchat is still early in India. Uh, TikTok, unfortunately, is banned in India. Before TikTok got banned, TikTok was doing exceptionally well. We had clients which were getting more sales from TikTok than they were getting from Facebook, some clients. Um, other than Snapchat, TikTok, the rest of the ad platforms are still in early stages. Like ShareChat has very recently launched their ad platform. Um, but I generally feel that it takes some time for the platforms to get mature. Uh, my uh, Suggestion to you would be unless you are at a very big scale where you definitely have to diversify out of Facebook, Google. Um, if we are talking about a scale of, let's say, under 10 crores per annum sort of sale or 5 crore per annum sale, then better is to make the most out of discovery, GDN, Google Display Network, and YouTube. Because these three put together will sort of solve your problem of what outside Facebook, Google. Technically, uh, Discovery, GDN, and YouTube are actually on the sidelines of Google, right? I'll tell you why. Because GDN serves ads across all independent apps and independent websites. These are not Google websites and Google apps. Similarly, Discovery and YouTube sits on YouTube.com, which is also not technically Google. Just because they acquired YouTube, it's Google, right? So yeah. what outside Facebook, Google is actually GDN and YouTube, in my opinion. OK, OK. Okay, and then there was Tabula, and both are facing RBI issues. So, we, but they used to cater to certain websites where you know we used to get traffic. Remarketing was happening, even if they are not opening Facebook or they are not opening Google. So, means Google for the reading, uh, they could see our ad. But now that is also stopped. So I think Tabula and uh, this thing. Let's see, like uh, GDN, YouTube is covered. Then we can, you know, discover we are doing it, but we will increase the budget there. God, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, anyone has a very quick question for Anshuk? I can give one minute until three fifty. Whoever wants to go first, quick one, or you can put it at the chat. I, I have. I just want to have a very quick question about the Facebook. Uh, Anshuk, you were absolutely bang on when you said about the payments issue the brands are encountering. So, you know, we realize that, you know, I think our payment is capped. You know, we cannot, we want to transfer 2 lakh rupees, 3 lakh rupees, but we cannot transfer more than 10,000 a day. And we can't spend more than 10,000 a day also. So, what is the solution for this? I'm talking about the Meta uh, business account ads. Yes, yes. yes. Um, there is no easy solution, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> Facebook has stopped giving credit lines to a lot of accounts now. Even bigger brands in India are struggling to get Facebook right line. No, we, we don't need credit. It is a prepaid account, and we want to transfer more prepaid account in the wallet. But uh, it, they, they they can accept only 10k per day as a max limit. Uh, so there, the solution is two folds. One, of course, there is a Facebook chat support which we can give it a try. Uh, yeah. Usually, it's not easy to navigate in the Facebook chat support. Hmm. Uh, second is. Um, uh, by default, Facebook has an internal mechanism where, depending on the spend history, uh, they will increase the limit of the prepaid. So, in due course of time, you should automatically see the 10,000 going up to 20 and 50,000. Uh, oh. But yes, I think it requires a little bit of waiting. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. got it. Got it. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Shripal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anshuk. Um, I think over the last three days, we learned a lot. I personally learned a lot. And I'm guessing like all our merchants are very, very uh, benefited with these uh, sessions. And as you know, like this is not going to end here as well, right? We will continue to, uh, you know, partner along and more details I'll share with them 
uh, towards the end of the session but i wanted to take this opportunity to thank you very much for putting this all together for the merchants and uh, making this wonderful session absolutely thank you so much again uh, i hope i was able to add value to the audience and very happy to be connected to the dtc community uh, i'm very active on linkedin so if any of you want to reach out of course um, uh, I, I shared my coordinates earlier also i'll share it now also but linkedin could be a great channel to keep the discussion going it has become a great platform also of late awesome thank you thank you very much anshu thanks thanks everyone okay so let's go for a short break and we'll be back at 357 five minutes break and we'll be bang on at 357 see you guys soon thank you